Welcome to Live Wire. We're going to get going in just a few minutes with a wonderful show for you today. We're going to be talking with James Wheatley from Ce Celebration Arts Theater Company. There's lots of changes in the theater world in Sacramento, and this is one of the very best ones. And so we want to talk to you about that. And also we're going to talk to a gentleman who had the dream to set up a a social service agency that would bring clean water to the world. And he's, he's uh, being successful. So stay tuned for Live Wire right after this important message. Hey, I'm Ray Tatter, and this is Live Wire, and we're talking with James Wheatley from Celebration Arts Theater Company, um, which has been here in Sacramento for over 30 years, and it celebrates the uh, black cultural experience throughout the United States and the diaspora from uh, of the uh, black communities from uh, African American communities from the beginning to now, right? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. All right. So tell me, you know, um, you were walking down the street when you were young and you thought, darn, I think I'll found me a theater company. Not even close. <laughs> okay. What happened? You were going to be a lawyer for the state. No, actually, I, I did work for the state. Uh -huh. But uh, before coming to Sacramento, I lived in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I started at the age of nine, ten, I, my grandmother had me singing at different churches. So I was about 11 years old. And someone, it was Boy Scout Sunday, it was in the, I was in the Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. and on Boy Scout Sunday we visited a church, and they had me sing. Someone in the audience heard me sing and referred me to a gentleman by the name of Jester Harrison, and he said, I want you to come and be in a movie. So we had to do some background singing. So that's how I got my started, uh, yeah. that, and then I kept singing, then I joined, well, singing in church, whatever, and then I joined a group called the Young Saints. Young and Saints? Sure, Young I remember Saints, them. And we performed in Vegas and Reno and Tahoe and television, did all kinds of stuff. But in the meantime, I kept going to school. Good. So I had a, I have a master's degree in counseling, and then um, I moved to Sacramento to take a, uh, well, I moved to, uh, to uh, San Jose. And so I supervised Department of Rehabilitation offices in uh, San Jose and Seaside, Monterey for a couple of months. Then I got another promotion and I came to Sacramento. Great. But I commuted to Los Angeles every week because I was dancing in a company there, the Ellie Johnson Dance Company. Oh. And I was singing with, still singing with the Young Saints. And then I gradually started things in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So I started a dance company in Sacramento. And well, the company came out of the fact that I was doing one-man shows, singing, doing dramatic readings of poetry that I'd written and what have you. And then I had some people come and dance with me. And I said, we should stay together. Would you like to stay together and dance? And they said, yes. So I, we started having class. I said, we have to have classes. Then they started bringing people to class. And I looked up, I had a room full of people who wanted to learn how to dance. And so I said, okay. Uh, so I did that. And the community for 10 years is teaching dance. Mm -hmm. It was free for a long time. Then the church we were using said, we got to ch charge you rent. So I charged people a dollar, then two dollars. That was back in the 70s. And now we're here in 2018. Mm -hmm. We're up to five dollars a class. Whoa. Yeah. Ooh. It's a very arduous class. Okay. But from that, after 10 years of teaching class, I decided to incorporate. I still hadn't gotten into the acting stuff. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. brought somebody else in to do the acting thing. But I incorporated Celebration Arts. The first group was Celebration Dance Company. That's right. Then I incorporated it as uh, Celebration Arts. And Celebration Arts is an organization that provides training and performance opportunities to community residents. It's not set up to be a theater. The performances are an extension of the training that people get in all three areas. So the theater, when we first started, 
the dance was really big in Sacramento. That's mm -hmm. sort of faded, but theater is very prominent. And so a lot of people look at us as being regular community theater. I said, no, we're a training organization. Training organization, sure. And, yeah, we you train know, people. But and uh, and um, I must say that a lot of um, <laughs> wonderful actors and directors have uh, come off of the training that you've done over the years. And they filter into other theaters. They filter into other either theaters. Either in the area or they go to mm -hmm. uh, Los Angeles we or have New York. Los Angeles, New York, where? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just tell them we're not there really to try to train actors and dancers and singers. That's, um, that's a personal choice people make. Mm -hmm. But what we, the, our training is geared to helping people see life differently. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah, and so whatever endeavor they enter, them, enter into, I think they're better prepared. Oh, that's great because, mm -hmm. you know, I do think that, um, I, I just uh, know of a program in town where um, a lot of uh, homeschooled kids really have low social skills mm -hmm. and uh, so they've developed a kind of a theater approach to socializing or or so giving these kids stronger social skills. Sure. And yeah. so that's a, in a way, you know, a, a kind of a side benefit to actually that and also understanding that communication is a kind of theatrical thing. I'm using some gestures sure. now. Probably not the right ones. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's here judging. That's, that's right. You're not here to judge me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So uh, I think that's a, a fascinating thing, and every city should have something like yes. this. Every city. I know that in Los Angeles there was the Inner City Cultural Center, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, that did uh, had an amazing impact on um, that town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Edna, and uh, there's a couple that uh, had a, a company that had a basic uh, training focus as well. Mm -hmm. I wish I could remember their names. They were amazing people. Uh, uh, but so you have this company here. So now you ha you have fallen into just this wonderful 27, 27 B Street, Street, going from a smaller theater to a larger space. Yes, yes. We were sort of cramped in 2,000 square feet, and now we've got 6,000 square feet. Good. We've got a larger uh, theater space. We can seat more people, and we can have wings and a crossover. <laughs> oh, wings and we didn't have before. Oh, a crossover, right. Yeah, yeah back, yes. <laughs> that's right. So that's it. those are exciting uh, steps forward in, yes. in, artistically, I think. And the fact that you're um, also closer to downtown. Yes. Uh, and um, that's important, too. And you're taking over a place where thousands of people have gone to the theater before. Very true. Very true. And so there's a, a, a nice thing. And you're opening with what play? A Raisin in the Sun, the Rain Hansberry's classic. Yes, a cla classic, which made her famous uh, in her very short life, but she did do a number of plays that we all still do. So why did you choose this play? What does it say to us? We've done this play before, mm -hmm. but uh, looking at what might interest people, what one, you know, because we're in a new location, what have you, but I think the play is still very relevant. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, well, everybody's seen, probably seen, the one with Sidney Poitier in it, but there yeah. are several others have been made also. But I think the, the whole idea of how you're accepted in the world. Mm -hmm. If you're a person of color, how do you get accepted in the world? When they're still, and we see every day, they're, problems, I mean, all over the world where people are being discriminated against because of race or color or ethnicity, whatever it is. And so, and, and still having a place to live. You can't, although you, you say you're supposed to be able to live any place you want, but there are still social pressures against that. Social barriers. Social barriers against yeah. that. I don't know, you know, you'd think that education in America would have moved us to a higher plateau. Yeah. Lorraine Hansberry's family in 1937 moved into a restricted area. Uh. And um, of course, their mobs uh, came out of their place, threw brick through the window. This, and they had restrictive covenants on the, on the mm -hmm. properties. And the Illinois um, State Supreme Court said that was okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> and they had, they had to move. They had to move. They did. So yeah. um, we, there were covenants in California too. We had the Rumford's, Rumford's Fair Housing thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you still have those, those kinds of things that if, if, even if they don't have the restricted covenants, you still have the, the social thing with people. And this play uh, talks about the, that kind of thing. It talks about that. It deals with, you got fam family dynamics. You have a woman who's a grandmother whose husband has been a very hard working person and he has, he's passed away and there was an insurance policy mm -hmm. and it was going to pay off for $10,000 and so that was a lot of money back mm -hmm. in the 50s, oh, lots yeah. of money. So the mother of course had some plans for it. She has a, a, a daughter who wants to go to medical school but her son also has some ideas that uh, he'd like to take that money and and open a liquor store. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little conflict arises out of that. Sure, so, yeah. And, and mother does actually make a down payment on a, in a home in a white area. Oh, yeah. I yeah. So um, this play opens on the 23rd. February 23rd and runs through March 24th. And it plays, interestingly enough, Thursday nights at 8, Friday nights at 8, and Saturday at 8, and you have a Sunday matinee. Sunday matinee at 2 p.m. That's good, uh, and that'll give a lot of people a chance to come and A, see the new theater, mm -hmm. B, see this play, which is a real classic. You know, I mean, it's amazing. This, uh, this is, was made into a film, and um, it was also a Hallmark Hall of Fame mm -hmm. video of a, uh, of a stage production. I remember there was a kind of, there was no music behind it when mm -hmm. I watched it as yeah. a kid. And I, th I found it was still fascinating, and acting was terrific. It was the first play written by an African American to be um, on Broadway. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, God, I thought they did that in the 1880s, <laughs> or they broke that thing. But okay, I think it's fabulous, just kind of wonderful. Yeah. And it's an ins inspirational play, so it's a good thing that people uh, come. And you've got, uh, looks like a heck of a cast. Oh yeah, well these are photos from previous plays we've done. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing now? You got a, you have um, the full cast yes. and training programs going and wow. Sure, we have, I'm teaching dance regularly and we do music, we have private students and classes so we're doing, we're having a lot of fun. Oh, you got other things going on here. You have uh, uh, February 18th, that's, we haven't this gotten there coming yet. Coming Sunday, we have open house from 3 to 6 p.m. Yeah, that's good. We'll have mm, entertainment. We'll have some little, some theater, some music, and dance. Yeah, good. Well, folks, um, and the the best thing is to think about celebration arts and just Google those words: celebration arts theater. Celebrationarts.net. Dot net is our website. Okay, dot net. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I want to thank you for coming to talk to me about this, James Wheatley, and I wish you well. Thank and you. you're the director of the play, so the onus is on you. It's on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'll be great, and I can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. All right. Okay, thank well, we've got to take a short pause for the cause, but we have a live truck venue somewhere out in the uh, area, and there's a live sports announcement about to come on, so uh, let's have a look at that, and then we'll be back with Live Wire to talk about water. Talk about water. All right. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you. Very All good. right, okay. I think we did good. We did. To all the folks there at Livewire and our viewing audience, welcome to the Dragon's Den. Yes, we're at Ground Zero here at Dave Hotel Pavilion at Sacramento High School for the renewal of one of the long-standing arch rivalries in California history. I'm Will James with Lauren Goodman, and we, a short time from now, will be covering the top attraction around town, one that you really ought to come over and see for yourself, Ray. McClatchy High coming in to face Sacramento High School and lots at stake in this one, Lauren. Tonight, this gym is going to be rocking and booming, going for a shared title. These two teams understand the magnitude and it's going to be an intense one. The rivalry has continued to escalate over the last five years in a series history that's been dominated for a long time by Sacramento High School. They won the first 16 meetings between the two. It's flipped around and now McClatchy 
has uh, taken a new direction and, and they've become more than just competitive. There is a new insurgence. There's a new big dog and McClatchy is coming and roaring through making some power moves. So hopefully tonight it will make some sound buzzing around these Sacramento basketball parts. So one part of our encouragement is to get here early. You probably won't be able to get near the place here as it gets closer to game time. Seven o'clock's the tip off, 7 p.m. We're going to be live here on Access Sacramento for the hometown sports game of the week. And um, it will be intense in here tonight. I won't say there's no love lost between these arch rivals, but the competition is going to be severe. Severe competition is true. In the Dragon's Den, it is known for filling up and packing soon. Standing room only, probably in this matchup tonight. Well, say hey, Ray, that's the essence of our message to you and the folks there on Livewire and their viewing audience. Sacramento High, 7 p.m. tonight, live. Girls basketball, the best in the area. McClatchy coming in to face the host, Sacramento Dragons. Come on down and see it. Well, we're back. Yes, we are. And so we've talked to culture, and now we're, uh, we've, you've talked to sports, and now we're going to talk to serving people who are really needy. Uh, and Mr. Mendoza here uh, runs an organization called what? La Mission Por Vida. La Mission Por Vida. And translated in English, that's the mission for life. Cool. That's very cool. So, uh, but, and I said uh, we we're going to come back, we're going to talk about water. Yeah. Is that what it's all about? It's about water. Um, we, our organization brings clean access to clean water in developing countries. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, I mean, uh, there must be kind of like a UNESCO uh, uh, documents that show which countries are the, uh, the most in need of clean water? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. You know, we worked in countries, uh, for example, like uh, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, uh, to name a few. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when these countries don't have access to clean water, it literally cripples the nations. It literally cripples the nations. And, um, uh, so um, you... Uh, you figure, I, I, I was trying to get at how you choose to send your energies in which, to which country, like Guatemala, you know, I mean, um, is, it, is it on a kind of a lower scale of, of uh, clean water countries, you know? Yeah, developing countries. Developing countries. Correct. And um, like now we're putting it together a project for Puerto Rico. Uh. And um, what we're doing there is obviously after the hurricane, they're in need. So now that we have um, some more time that, mm -hmm. uh, to create this project, we're creating this project for Puerto Rico coming up. And how do, how do uh, I mean, I, I used to know um, a, 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 a guy here in uh, Sacramento who would make uh, solar cookers mm. and take them to developing countries and give them away where they're needed. Absolutely. Um, and try to work to, with the um, power centers of each community uh, so it didn't step on toes that's right you know i mean uh i was i was just studying also heifer which gives uh, animals to uh, de in developing countries to families who can then make uh uh give give a poor a family a, a cow they have milk they can actually sell the milk if they have the cow gives a lot of milk, you know, or they don't have a lot of children. Correct. Anyway, so it becomes a empowerment. That's right. Uh, and this actually keeps them alive so that they can be empowered. That's right. Water. It's life. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, most of our yeah. body is made up of water. Yeah. That's right. So uh, how do you, how do, how's, the, how's the water cleaned? You know, we have filters that uh, about the size of my palm. Mm -hmm. These filters last about 15 plus years, depending how they take care of them, maintain them. Yeah. And these filters basically are able to filter out all parasites and metals, about 99.99% of all parasites and metals. It wow. cleans out. This is good. Mm -hmm. So um, you have, you're a nonprofit. That's correct. And uh, nonprofits uh, get donations and the like. And, but, but there are people who then um, donate their time and energy to make this happen for you. That's right. right. That's right. Wow. So how does, how does it work now? Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, uh, how's it work is basically uh, our organization um, gives people access, 
to help out other countries. So say coming up uh, Puerto Rico, people will have the opportunity to help out. Um, mm -hmm. So basically that's coming up and we will be sending out a team uh, to Puerto Rico to implement a water project, the global water project. Global, global water project. So, so um, that would be to set up systems in Puerto Rico. Correct. Uh, which is, is, is not a foreign country. No, 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 <laughs> exactly. Actually, they have a congressman. Yeah. Um, t yeah. And a senator. Yeah. Uh, and so. Uh, Helping out our own. So it's very important that we, uh, if, if the government's not going to take up the uh, rebuilding of that country, then people like you will. That's right, yep. We will go anywhere um, and help anyone out. Uh, we have no, um, uh, no guidelines. We basically, we will help whoever is in need. Need that's correct. is the guideline, right? That's right. So that's very important. Um, and uh, do you, how do you make uh, money? I mean, how do you uh, provide uh, whatever you, uh, it's a lot of knowledge you're providing, but um, there, there's got to be some, something that you actually take there. Like um, this guy that I told you about, the, about the uh, uh, solar cookers. That's right. Um, he uh, talked companies into giving him sheets of um, uh, cardboard. Okay. Uh, and uh, he got mirrors and the like, which, you know, you put on this, you make a box out of the cardboard and you put the mirrors in, Absolutely. and the mirrors collect the sun and you can, you can put something in a pot in the middle of that thing mm -hmm. and it'll be hot and bo boiling in about an hour. Yes, absolutely. So you have uh, something uh, like a video or something you're going to show us. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a look at it. Let's have a look. Okay. Sure. This is a video and it's about Por la Vida. La Misión Por la Vida. Tiene huella acá. Pero dice que ya le voy a los seguros cuando hay agua, ¿no? pero está lejísimo. Y ahora y media, bastante hora. ¿no? Pero, pero uno la hace porque como necesito uno. ¿no? Wow, thank you. Yeah. That's really interesting. Absolutely. Okay, so you ha you find people, they look a very rural area. Yeah, correct. Absolutely. And uh, the water looked kind of odd. It is, yeah. I've never seen such dirty water in my life. Wow. When, I, when I started working um, in other countries, what we have just readily available, they need to walk up to six hours a day. Yes, yeah, and that's uh, what that guy told me about the the uh, solar cookers, you know. Uh, in a lot of places, the the wood is deforested all the way around where they live. That's right. Because for years they, you know, they had, and so the uh, people would walk for five or six hours just to be able to cook some that's meat. Right. That's right. Or something. That's right. Vegetables. Yeah, and it takes away their time to go to school, to work, to provide for the family. Well, they don't become developing countries; they become stunted. That's correct. They're not thriving. They're surviving. Yeah. All right. So that's an important thing. So if uh, someone wanted to get in touch with you to help you. Sure. Um, and to maybe take part in one of these things. Uh, spend a few bucks. Go to Ecuador or wherever you're going. Right. Or, or Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. um, how would they do that? You can uh, look us up on uh, at www lamechonporvida.org. I know that's a mouthful, but you can also look us up at themissionforlife.org. Themissionforlife.org. Right. Well, certainly water is life, you it know, is. and it life is. is water. No, no. <laughs> no, water is life, right. Water is life, you know, and so, and we need it, you know. I, I just talked to a young man who 
whose uh, grandmother went in, they thought she was dying and she was just dehydrated. Mm. You know, she just somehow didn't think that she needed a good quart of water a day to keep hydrated. That's right, that's right. We all do, and I think um, Americans tend to be underhydrated because they drink a lot of coffee and other things that um, dehydrate you. That's right, that's right. Yeah, we, what we also do out there is we educate them on clean water, mm -hmm. brushing your teeth, cooking with this clean water. So, yes. uh, oh, so yes. it actually is important. We, we do bring access, but the education is the, is, the strong, is the part that's really needed. Yeah, and I bet you, you know, you're probably changing the life expectancy in that country as well. <laughs> that's right. Wow, what are these pictures? Okay. Excellent, so we have here, this is one of our uh, projects in El Salvador, and this is a group uh, in El Salvador that we partner with Compassion International, uh -huh. another uh, great organization. Um, here is uh, actually in uh, Guatemala, two gentlemen, yep. little caballeros and out there, and um, basically just uh, uh, looking at, um, this is uh, one of our, our uh, project managers, uh -huh. and uh, her name is Jimena, and she's actually walking, one of the uh, uh, person who received the filter, and um, we take, it's not just a, a project, we take it personal, so she's actually walking her back home you know, after the pro you know, after Good. the project. Good. Whoop, and there's a class. That's right. Here's a class, and that's us educating them on the importance of clean water, brushing your teeth, cooking with clean water, mm -hmm. and um, also wa washing your dishes with clean water and drinking clean water, right? Wow, absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is us in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. That's right. Yeah, we just uh, finished a project, uh, about 175,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, here is Cambodia at a, um, at a well. See that? Yeah. That's right. That's us uh, uh, doing a presentation in Cambodia. How swell! Yeah, and here's a little young man who was. That's a great picture. That's right, receiving uh, uh, the blessing of access to clean water. Good. Yeah. Well, I think you uh, do uh, God's work. Amen. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, you do. Obviously, you know. I mean, keeping people on the planet and um, helping them extend their life and uh, be part of a community that's healthy. That's right. Uh, is is job number one. That's right. That's right. We are a Christ-centered organization, oh. but we help anyone. You know, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, Buddhist. It doesn't matter. We're all brothers and sisters when it when it comes down to it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, walking on the planet. That's right. You know, help a brother and sister out. That's right. Well, Mr. Mendoza, thank you. Thank you, William. Yeah, thanks, thank Ray. you. All right, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Whoa, that's all the time we have today, uh, and we wish you to come back next Wednesday. You know this program is every Wednesday at five o'clock and we meet uh, people like William Mendoza and uh, James Wheatley and uh, do this whole thing. So we're gonna say goodbye to you and we'll see you next week. So we're saying goodbye. Bye, thanks so much.